My name is Ryan Vargas. I am 22 years old. I am a NASCAR driver, social media guy, marketing guy. I do a lot of different things. <laughs> the shop floor uh, we got a bunch of cars kind of getting ready right over here is our California car that's the plan right now this is our road course car this is the car I drove at Portland um, finished 23rd with it which was actually a pretty decent day uh, considering it was a absolute downpour the entire time so that this is a bit of a special car to me Odd Point Motorsports is a pretty, you know, well-established truck series organization that has, on on occasion, contended for wins. But they're, you know, they run inside the top ten, got a lot of top tens, top fifteens. Um, for me, you know, I again, I've never done it, and so the way I looked at it was, you know, let me when I approach my partners, you know, the critical paths, the Williamsburg contracting, the Lyrgis securities. I, I asked them. I was like, look. This is something we've never done. I know I've got you guys kind of on this Xfinity train, but what if we did a truck race? What if we did truck racing? And all those guys, you know, without hesitation, were like, let's do it. You know, this is a good opportunity for us to see how you do in this. I mean, again, I've, again, I've never done it. I'm not going in with the expectation of setting the world on fire, because if you do, that's just setting yourself up for failure. Um, but it's gonna put a little pressure on me. Um, a new kind of pressure that I haven't had necessarily um, you know jumping into a competitive truck like that you know there are gonna be a few more eyes on how I do um, so I have to put a little bit of emphasis on my preparation going into it you know whether that be sim laps whether that be studying notes whether that be uh, fitness and training regimens so especially because there's gonna be days where I'm running the Xfinity car and the truck on the same day or same weekend so it's two week two races in one weekend so um it's gonna be a lot of fun I i'm i'm excited about it it's a new change but it's a new challenge and that to me is just as exciting if not more you know than anything i've done in my career all right so we're here at on point motorsports uh nascar craftsman truck series team this is a, like i mentioned a new thing for me i've never done trucks so so this is the facility. We're deep in uh, preseason prep, prep. So this is our setup plate. Obviously, once the cars are basically ready to go, basically all put together, this is where you do all the setups and stuff like that. Right over here is our pull-down rig. It's kind of got a bunch of stuff around it, but you basically pull the truck down, make sure you kind of get all the loads right and all of that stuff. It's a very big, um, <laughs> it's a very big thing. Um, it's very important to have all that stuff right because you want the nose. You basically want to make sure that the travels are good on the nose, that the bumps, bump stops are working right, the splitter isn't going to hit, so it's very important to make sure you track all that stuff. So you see over here, we got some trucks getting ready over here. This is one of the trucks that just ran uh, not too long ago. I believe this truck ran at Homestead. Um, and then this one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is a Speedway truck. So we're getting all this stuff ready here. Um, we have another Speedway truck in the back getting put together. and then. I believe my Atlanta car is either this one or it's over back there on the plate. Um, so my first race in the truck series is Atlanta Motor Speedway with my partners at Lyrgis Security, um, which is going to be a, a fantastic opportunity. Lyrgis is based in Canton, Canton Georgia, um, Atlanta Motor Speedway, really, literally not too far away. So um, big, big weekend for them. This is where we basically, basically mount the bodies, put together the whole thing, do what we need to do to it. A lot of time and work goes into it back here. But yeah, so the big thing with this year too is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. So once my races kind of get closer, uh, like I mentioned, my first race is Atlanta, um, which is middle of March. Uh, it's early February right now. Um, 
we'll start getting everything kind of put together, kind of building everything, and I'll try and be in the shop here more as well, trying to learn more about the equipment, learn more about the trucks, learn more how to set them up, because all I know is the Xfinity car. You know, I've driven the Xfinity car for 60-something races at this point, you know, over at CHK. I'm able to work on those things and kind of know what I'm doing. Here, while there's a lot of the same bones, it's in, in the same token, there's a lot of different things, a lot of different parts, a lot of different body styles. I mean, the biggest thing for me is it's a you know, you have to manufacture the body yourself. You know what I mean? That's the biggest thing versus the Xfinity car is a flange fit body. It's all parts sent in by a distributor and you bolt it together. Here, you have to craft everything. You know, the, t the people here have to do that. Same thing with just the way the suspension rules are and everything and the way these cars drive, it's a night and day difference. I mean, first thing is they're so much more bulky. They're, you can see how much taller they are really than the Xfinity car. Um, so. That's gonna be the biggest challenge for me is learning how to drive such a big, bulky brick, essentially. Um, but it's gonna be fun. I I'm, I'm very excited about what everything here has in store. My dad was a big racing fan and one day he decided to take me to Irwindale Speedway. We went there um, and just so happened to see one of the recess aides from my elementary school there and I asked her what she was doing there and she said her son raced and that immediately kind of got me excited because I'm like, oh really, Like I didn't know that. She said, yeah, we plan on selling the car um, and right when I heard that I immediately was like, oh, I can do this. I didn't know that. So we ended up getting into what is called a Bandolero race car, which is like a third scale sized uh, stock car, which has a 30 horsepower Briggs and Stratton racing engine in it. And when I say that that was my first experience in racing, I was 11 years old and I'd never driven anything competitively. I got thrown to the wolves and uh, we ended up winning several championships and continue moving up and here we are. But then when I was 14, I moved up to what are called NASCAR street stocks. My car was a 1973 Chevy Camaro. That was the first, you know, full body, full size race car that I had driven. Um, I was 14 racing against guys who were in their, at the youngest in their 20s and at the latest in their 50s. It, it taught me a lot about how to drive a full body, full size car, but also having to earn respect uh, in a series that I am fresh to. Uh, I actually won my first ever street stock race the day that Dave Ashelman unfortunately passed uh, this most recent year. Um, he was there, he owned a NASCAR super late model team and late model team. Uh, he saw me win. I coached his granddaughter uh, in Bandolero cars a little bit and he said, you know, I want you to drive my race car. That led to me having an opportunity to race in, the, in a NASCAR super late model um, at 15 years old, which is insane. The, the fact that we made it to there was really, really cool and to do it with Dave and his family. It was a very important moment for me because I was adjusting to something with a ton of horsepower, a ton of speed. And from there, we just kept grinding, you know, started running top five consistently, started running top three consistently. And then in 2017, we purchased our own race car, started winning races, and that led to us uh, kind of making a, a mark in the, at the time, the NASCAR All-American Series. Now it's the Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series. I won the Wendell Scott Trailblazer Award uh, two years running, which goes to the highest ranking minority or female driver um, in the All-American Series points. There's over 500 drivers in the series, and I was 17th. And last of all, I really want to say thank you to those at NASCAR for even considering me for this award. You're really making that little 10-year-old speed channel watching kids dream become a reality here tonight. Thank you. Cool thing for me, it kind of legitimized what we did on the West Coast, you know, ranking that high against people who raced their whole lives. So that was a, a big one for us. And from then, just moved out to North Carolina, joined the NASCAR Drive Diversity Program for one season, um, ran in the Canaan and Pro Series East, now the Arca Menard Series East. Um, did okay, not, not my best year, um, but I was a rookie. 
didn't know much, and then just continued working up. Uh, got back into late models the year following. Um, learned a lot about marketing. Learned a lot about social media, um, and that led to me making my first Xfinity Series start. Um, and the rest is history. So this right here is my uh, sim rig. Um, it's pretty unremarkable. So I'll do a lot of streaming here. Um, I'll, I'll do a lot of stuff on TikTok or Twitch. Whenever I have the time to do so, I, I try to the best I can just because it's fun. It, it's a fun way to engage with people and just let loose a little bit, you know, race, but also show, you know, show the fun side of it. So I use social media in a lot of ways. The biggest way for me is just telling my story and just being as authentic, as real, and as transparent as possible. I haven't posted about my scar on my head in a long time, but technically, this comment is right. Now before you get to asking, how is that possible? Let me explain. So the actual story is, I was born with what is called craniosynostosis. I've been very fortunate to amass a pretty sizable following on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and it's, that's helped me out a lot because I know that I have a lot of people that support me and believe in me, but to see sometimes whenever something does go wrong, but so many people know what I'm doing, understand my situation. That makes the, those bad days so much better because they get it. Up here is my little home office. We have Dale, he watches over us here at the house. And then this actually is a pretty cool little bit. This is my windshield from Daytona uh, when we finished sixth. Um, this window was basically kind of put out of commission because I had a piece, take a chunk out of it right there from one of the big crashes. So I got to keep that. Everything else in the car was perfectly fine, but I wanted to keep something off of it. So the windshield that was basically worthless at that point was all we had. And then here is my, basically my home office. Um, I basically do every bit of my work here. My calendar's a little bit blank right now just because I finally cleared it. Um, but I have this whiteboard where I basically have all of my partners and stuff like that, all the partners I currently have, all the partners that I'm working on. Um, and then on to the side, I have the truck schedule, the Xfinity schedule, um, and I just continuously work on trying to fill out those things. And I also have a little bit of a list of my 2023 goals. Um, so that's been a... That's something that I look at kind of like as a motivation thing. Very important book, highly recommend, but this is the first ever die cast that I got made by Lionel. Um, growing up, you get those die casts like that. Um, and as a racer, you always kind of want this. You, you want to have your own die cast with your own name and to have like an official, you know, die cast made of you it's all the more special so this was from our uh race with r slash nascar and reddit car came out phenomenally and uh we're pretty dang excited about that and then the last kind of real cool thing this was actually just given to me gotten back to me but this is the the suit that i ran when i had tiktok when they sponsored me back in 2020 it's a very special suit um, like I mentioned earlier, it's, <clears throat> it's, uh, this set the tone for my career. So my worst memory, um, would be Pocono 2021. We had just lost my car chief and one of my best friends, Brian Lear. Um, he taught me a lot about race cars. We lost him after the Charlotte race. Going into Pocono, we ran a big Brian Lear decal on the hood for his home race. There was a big crash in front of me, and we piled right into it. That car that I crashed was the last car he built. I'm fine. I just had nowhere to go. I feel awful for this team. We're, it's been a tough start to the year, and it's been a really good rebound recently. I, I hate that we wrecked with Lear on the hood. I miss him a lot. <laughs> And uh, I just hate disappointing, and uh, I feel like I did that today, so. I was born with craniosynostosis. Um, it affects one in every two to 3,000 kids. Um, craniosynostosis is one of many craniofacial differences.
uh, mine, specifically my soft spot closed and it caused the sutures and my skull to fuse. Uh, and my head is completely flat right here on this side. I had surgery on it when I was 11 months old um, and it's led to um, me having this really cool scar. Um, but knowing that I have it and, and learning more about it, I wanted to use my platform to kind of raise awareness for the, the disorder as well as be a source of inspiration for those who have it or who have kids that have it. Because from what I know, I'm the only like professional athlete that has craniosynostosis. I was fortunate to where I only needed one surgery, but there are many, many kids who have had numerous surgeries, um, who have surgeries throughout their, you know, early teens, you know, or even into their 20s, you know, where it affects their eyesight, their hearing, their their nose, and it's it, it's heartbreaking because, you know, it, there's nothing you can do. Um, so for myself to use my platform to kind of highlight those struggles uh, that, you know, these children and these families go through, um, that's paramount for me. Whenever I retire, I want people to know that I've just given every ounce of my being. The nights where I stay up past 2 a.m. working on sponsorship decks, sending emails, making phone calls, the long nights in the shop working on race cars, being hands-on, working on these things and trying to uplift a group, and then also the long, hard days where things just don't go right, but I still try and put on a smile and show to people that I can do it silencing those who doubt what I am.